Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing one of the most underrated dive watches ever. This watch was originally launched in 2014 as the Calibre de Cartier Diver with black dial, black bezel, and stainless steel case. Well, for 2016 at the SE Oshash, Cartier launched what you see here, rich red gold and a blue ceramic bezel with a dial to match. It is a very easy watch to wear, 42 millimeters in diameter, but only 11.1 millimeters thick, one of the thinnest 300 meter divers you're going to encounter. From lug tip to lug tip, it's 48.3 millimeters, and then it has an idiosyncratic lug spacing. It's 23 to 24 millimeters, but you can see how the lugs actually converge on each other. So it's 24 at its root, but at its tip, it's about 23.5, a little bit unusual. So it does have a proprietary shaped and sized strap. Throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see how those cambered case flanks with the downward thrusting lugs really wrap around the wrist, making for an outstanding fit and a really planted watch. This watch is approximately 1.3 millimeters thinner than a Rolex Submariner. Yes, 1.3 millimeters thinner than a Rolex Submariner. In fact, it's thinner than the standard Calibre de Cartier watch, and this is the dive model. Fits under a cuff, no problem. And it's so short across the wrist and beautifully curved that I'd actually recommend you try wearing this on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference against Mine is 16 centimeters circumference. The strap is high grade. As you can see, it's nicely shaped. It's got a little bit of a, a diamond relief texture on the top, and it's very thick, so it augurs well for the longevity of this strap, which you can see is not crimped, is not gouged. It is a Cartier factory strap. We have a matching rose gold pin buckle, and if you look carefully, there's a little bit of a micro bevel on that, which is nice attention to detail. It has another feature I appreciate, which is an elevated bridge. So instead of running simply from one prong to the other, you see how it arcs up and over? So when the strap is inside the buckle on the wrist, it sits flat and flush rather than stacking up. So that's a nice piece of attention to detail. And this watch is rife with them. You can see there's a little bit more beveling and polished beveling on the flanks of the lugs. It's a nice touch. The serrated edge of the bezel is also polished. For the most part, the finish here is satinated, but with some nice polished accenting. Note that when we turn it upside down, the beveling of the lugs wraps all the way down around the bottom, and then a small hairline bevel continues from end to end across the mid-case. The screws that represent well, we'll call them skeuomorphic mounting screws for the strap. They are also polished, and when you get around to the crown side, the crown guards, which are fixed with screws, they can be individually replaced with gouge if gouged. Uh, those little guards feature a combination of satin and polish, and then the crown itself is faceted, and it features a piece of spinel that is itself faceted in a lovely little translucent blue cabochon. Now, the watch does have a screw down crown. It is 300 meters water resistant, but this is a real ISO 6425 certified and compliant diver. So before it left Cartier, it was certified to 125% of the rated depth on the dial. Now the bezel is probably the most refined I've ever encountered. Two things going on. First, it glides on ball bearings. Second, it has a silky 120 click action. You rarely encounter bezels that are ball bearing mounted. As a result, this has a wonderful solidity and precision to it. It also has the best combination of a sharp detent with a silky glide that I've found this side of Grand Seiko and Rolex. So this is really one of the best. And with this sharp knurling, it's easy to grip if your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved, as they might be during a dive. Now, the watch has a ceramic bezel insert. So you can see, in blue, it's ceramic for scratch resistance. It's also slightly dished, so it slopes sort toward the center. There is a black bezel version of the Calibre de Cartier diver that features an ADLC, amorphous diamond-like carbon coating. The blue one is ceramic, so that's an interesting distinction. The dial is mostly matte blue. You can see it's got a sort of concentric track underneath the hour markers, and then the center is a blue sunburst. The hands are rose gold broadsword plated. We have a rose gold chapter ring around the small seconds, and then we have a triple date, and I set it 
as you see here, you can find out why there's a triple date. Even if the current date is covered, you see the preceding and succeeding date, so I still know that it's the 14th. Now, this is a well-loomed dial and a really well-loomed dial at that. Let's take a quick look. You can instantly tell this is a Cartier diver. There's a big luminescent index on the bezel, and you can see the second sand is running with its entire chaptering fully loomed. So with this dive bezel, you just line up. By the way, you will have fun just playing with this bezel. It's that satisfying. You line it up with the minute hand. Now you have a count up zero to 60 minute timer. I always prefer dive bezels to chronographs, easier to read. And provided you don't need to time something beyond an hour, you don't have the downstream maintenance costs of a chronograph. Two subsidiary setting modes. One is hacking seconds, so you can stop the seconds hand. And then the watch also features a quick set function for the date. So if you wish, you can rapidly cycle the date and correct it. Inside, we have Cartier 1904 MC, which is a dual barrel automatic winding manufacture movement made by Cartier in La Chaux de Fonds, where it has its headquarters, where this watch is made. It is a 48 hour power reserve. It has the hacking, it has the stop seconds, it has a four hertz beat rate, it pivots on 27 joules. And it's interesting that it has two barrels because in this instance, it doesn't have two barrels to achieve an outrageously long power reserve, but a very flat power curve or a very flat torque curve is what I really mean to say. So from minimum wind to maximum wind, you're going to have a very consistent application of force to the escapement, which allows this watch to keep very, very regular time. So back when Rolex had 48 hour power reserves, it used a single barrel and Rolex's service standards for its service departments, whether at Rolex or satellite was always for a huge drop-off in amplitude over 24 hours. With twin barrels, this 48-hour movement does not have that, so you're not going to get a big drop-off after 12, 18, or 24 hours thanks to that dual-barrel architecture. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.